Um, they say, state tips say, there's seven ways to succeed in Sanders biology class. If you've lost yours, I have more, let me know. So, basically this is a couple of tips that work for me, but the rest of them are honestly, when I have a kid who I know is struggling, and then they just figure it out and suddenly they're like really killing it. I always take them aside and say, what'd you do? How'd you do that? What worked? So this is a combination because because I had to learn to study at some point too. And it really kind of wasn't until freshman year of college, but man, I was in trouble. Um, and honestly, the thing that helped me the most on my own was number one. Um, I call it active reading. And I bring it up every time I get like the the parent who says, I don't know what to tell you. He's in his room for three hours every night. He's got his book open, he's reading it. He's not playing video games, he's not doing anything. He's, he's reading his book and he's still not, not doing well. Or the kid that's like, Mr. Sandra, I stayed four hours last night, still failed your test. And the question is always, well, how are you reading? Like are you just opening the book and, and just reading through the chapter? Or you just open your notes and kind of look through it? Or are you like actively quizzing yourself strictly on the material? Because when I study, and I do still have to study sometimes, what it looks like for me is me being real mean to myself. Like I'll read the first paragraph and then I'll close the book and I'll go, okay, what do I remember about that? Could I like teach someone about that paragraph? If not, I got to go back and read it more. Okay, when I got that first paragraph down, then I move on to the second paragraph. And I do the same thing, except when I'm done with the second paragraph, I got to explain the first and the second paragraph to myself. And if I've forgotten the first one, I got to go back to the beginning. And I just keep adding things, but making sure I'm retaining the first stuff. Because it's real easy to learn something and then forget the last thing you learned. Where you got to kind of keep quizzing yourself is to keep the whole piece. It's honestly how I learn your names. You've probably seen me going through my seating chart and then putting it away and going, okay, Addison, um, Sailor, that's an easy one. Um, crap, and then I gotta, and I gotta start over, right? And I, and I, okay, I gotta start back from here after I look at my seating chart for a minute. That's like active reading. It's basically being as strict as you can with yourself. Don't let yourself move on until you know you've got it. I don't know if it's for everyone, but I know that it was kind of the, the piece that got me there. Um, Second is the textbook is great. It's a good textbook. I do pattern the class uh, mostly on the order of things that they do. We mix it up a little bit, but a lot of the chapters, I go through topics pretty closely like they do. I explain things different than they do. Um, the textbook is a great way to get probably a different explanation of a concept. If you're not getting it from me, I explain it. You still don't understand it. Here's the textbook and see, see how that goes. But know that anything that's in the textbook that I haven't at least touched on briefly in the notes, you don't have to know it for a test or quiz. So reading through the chapter can be good, but don't spend a billion years doing that when there's stuff there that's not in the notes. Some chapters we follow more closely than others. I try to communicate that. Um, one thing that I wish I had done more of when I was in school and that I do now whenever I've learned something new it has to do with short and long-term memory. Um, when we do something kind of chunky in class like we've done the last couple of days, uh, you should go home and sometime in the evening, before dinner, after dinner, before bed, spend, give yourself five to 10 minutes to go through the notes again and just rehash in your head what we did. Make sure you can remember what we talked about, how I explained stuff, what the concepts looked like, any images you can remember are good. What you're doing when you do that is moving what you learned during the period from your short-term memory parking lot to your long-term. And if you do that fairly faithfully every night, there's way less cramming that has to be done. I promise. It's it's you know this is research-based stuff. When you look at something within a certain amount of time after learning it once, you're moving more of it to, to long-term memory before that sleep where you kind of shake the edge of sketch, you know, and, and, and things disappear. Um, sample essay questions are me trying to help. They're not just annoying homework. 
I do take them as homework sometimes. You get points for them sometimes. But those are sneak previews of the tests. They really are. If you'll if you'll look back, you know, any test we take, you're going to find a couple of those essay questions on that test were right there in the sample essay score. They might have been worded a little differently, but that's a great way to practice. You know, do them, but then also like put them away and see if you can answer the questions without looking anything up. That's how you know you've got it, right? Um, study groups. The other thing that I learned in college can be really helpful. I, I made a few friends that were also fairly serious about doing well, actually maybe more serious than I was. And we would find a, an empty classroom with a, with a chalkboard and just draw stuff out for each other. We would take turns explaining the concepts in this weeder, you know, weeder courses. A weeder course. It's there to like weed out the, the people who are serious about, weed out the people who aren't serious about, say, being a biology major like I was. Um, and this class was that. And, um, so, you know, we would take turns explaining these concepts in this class to our, to each other. I will tell you, you never understand something as well as when you can teach it to someone else from lots of experience now. Um, if you can teach a concept to someone, you understand it better than you did before. Um, number six is me. Like I am here. Part of my job is to help you. So 1.30 on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm here. Um, Mondays, Thursdays, I have remote meets, so I can't be there right away, but maybe um, set up a time a little later with me. Um, and I can help. You gotta come with specific questions. It can't just be, help, but like, you know, if you if you have stuff that you're having trouble with, I promise I can help. Um, now, number seven is kind of just like what your parents told you. It's that life isn't fair, and that there are people probably in this class that are having to struggle less than you because they have photographic memories or whatever. Um, I guess the good news I can offer you is that if you're learning this now, you're learning study skills now, I can tell you that having to learn those study schools in college is, study skills in college is harder because there's less structure. Learning it now, you will be better off in the long run than your body with the photographic memory that has to do it, you know, sophomore year of college. Questions? That's what I've got for you. Stuff that's worked for me and stuff that has worked for students I have taught. So not all of those things are going to work for you, but a couple of them will. You just kind of got to figure out which ones. Good. Grab your notes. Um, remind me, we'll do it tomorrow. I want you to see a movie. Um, basically, this is what happens when like hotshot uh, computer animators, like video game type people, um, get together with like Harvard biologists. Uh, it is a an animated video of the inside of a cell, specifically a white blood cell, as it makes the changes inside itself that it needs to make to get out of a blood vessel and go fight whatever it needs to fight. Um, we've talked about cytoskeleton. There's a lot of that in here, a lot of that, the, the microtubules and microfilaments that you use to move things. Um, so see what you think. It, I think it pulls together a lot of the concepts that, that we've addressed so far. I'm trying to do this for remote people as well, so we will see how well it works. That's the inside of the blood vessel with red blood cells in the middle and white blood cells crawling along the edges. That's the cell membrane with proteins floating in it. Microfilaments anchored to the inside of the cell membrane. Cytoskeleton, all kinds of different fibers. Microfilament being built. A 
microfilament being cut. Microtubule being built. Remember what they're for? Moving cell parts like along a train track, that's other protein vessel along. Might have put on the right. RNA, should have got the new course. Ribosome going on, one piece, and then the other piece. That thing starts making a protein. See that thing up left. Ribosome dumping its protein into the ER. ER sending vesicles to the Golgi apparatus. Filled with that protein. Butter protein walking those vesicles where they're going. They make it to the Golgi apparatus. The apparatus sends them onto the surface. In the surface, and all these proteins are a message basically for that cell to stick to the edge of the blood vessel. And cause that cell to change shape, ease out between two cells of the blood. So I just think it's a good way to kind of tie together what we've talked about involves most of the parts that we did. Questions? Cool. Um, so we're shifting gears now. We need to talk about what we call transport. And by transport, we basically mean how stuff gets in and out of cells. Stuff needs to get in and out of cells, right? Like cells have to stay alive. So they need stuff in them to survive. They have to get waste out of them. They have to send proteins out sometimes, you know, like hormones and enzymes and stuff like that. So the first thing you need to know is that this is very much a water-based situation, right? Cells are full of liquid and most of them are surrounded by liquid. So the first thing we have to establish is some solution terms. Like when something is dissolved in a liquid, what do we call that? What do we call the stuff that's dissolved? You make salt water, you make Kool-Aid. Those are solutions, right? What do we call the powder? in the Kool-Aid packet. In terms of solution chemistry, what is that? Um, that's the other thing. Solute. Solute, yeah, solute. usually we say solute just so it's not confused with, you know, this. Um, yeah, solute, that's the stuff dissolved in a liquid. And Allie's right, solvent is the liquid the stuff's dissolved in. Of course, the two together, we already said, solution. But now we need a way to talk about how much solute there is. 
and not just how much total but how much solute there is per amount of solvent. Because that can vary a lot, right? Like, like if I make two pitchers of Kool-Aid and in this picture, I put the one packet of the Kool-Aid stuff and like the recommended cup of sugar in. In this picture, I put like two packets of the Kool-Aid stuff and five cups of sugar. This Kool-Aid's different, right, than this Kool-Aid? Dissolve it all in there. What's the difference? The ratio, of the, to the ratio of solute to solvent. I like that. We have a term for it though in solutions. What do we say? Scientifically, we'd say this Kool Aid is more what than this? Huh? True. Better. Acidic or basic? No. It's going to be slightly acidic because most of those aren't. Saturated? Uh, it might or might not be saturated. That's what we call it when no more solute can dissolve into it. How about, wait, I'll give you a hint. Orange juice. Concentrated, that's it. Yeah, concentration. The amount of solute per volume of solvent. Um, Okay, we're gonna do a little experiment. All you gotta do when I light this candle is raise your hand when you smell it. Got it? No, keep it up once you smell it. Got it. Raise your hand as soon as you smell the candle or the smoke. So uh, I have to tell you the masks don't help and there might be a couple of weird air currents. But you'll get it. <laughs> Perfect. What's the general pattern? <laughs> Can someone use their words? <laughs> okay, I like that. Outward, basically, from in here to out there. Good. And we know what smell is now, right? We know that smell is just molecules. And those molecules, I basically just dissolved a whole bunch of them into that air right there, right near your face, sorry. And then they went outward. I mean, if we could, if we could track it three-dimensionally, it'd basically be a sphere of you know, moving outward. Anybody know the word for the process by which that happened and will always happen? So it turns out that, that Molecules like that that are dissolved in a solution are always moving randomly, like in all different directions. But when you concentrate a bunch of them in one place, it's going to look like they're moving outward because they're basically going from where there is a what concentration to a what concentration. Allie? So that process is called diffusion. And diffusion is just when random motion of molecules. They're all moving in random directions, but the overall net movement is going to be from, like Ali said, high concentration to low concentration. Sweet potatoes and brown sugar. <laughs> oh, that's what that is. Not my favorite. What is it? Sweet potatoes and brown sugar. All of a sudden, now it's that's smoke. Like I'll, I'll eat that, but I don't want to smell it in the candle. So, 
they move well, I don't know, they wouldn't travel as much. Um, bad, the bad ones are good for the experiment. Um, so so the, the high to low concentration movement happens until there's no more difference, right? Until everything is the same concentration. We're probably getting close to that in here, where any air sample you took would have the same number of stinky sweet potato brown sugar molecules in it, you know, parts per million or whatever. So until equilibrium, that's what we call it. Well, then how does it technically like go away eventually, or do we just get used to it? Both. You definitely smells, you know, you, you reach a saturation point where your, your nerves fire enough that that smell is there that you just kind of, it's called a refractory period, you don't even notice it. But also the smell molecules run into things and stick to them and maybe escape under the door to the point where they're so not concentrated that you don't smell them, which will be true by next period. Because I did it last period and you didn't smell when it came out. Um, so this is the first step here because there are molecules that can do that that can get in and out of the cell membrane just through diffusion they got to be real small and they got to not have a charge because the middle of the cell membrane is um nonpolar, right it's those tails and they don't, that doesn't like to let charged stuff through so small enough stuff that's uncharged can just get right through the cell membrane by diffusing through it uh, and they're important, the molecules that can do that. Oxygen can do that, carbon dioxide can do that, and water can do that. And thank goodness. You got a whole organ system based on getting oxygen to each cell and dropping it off next, next to that cell and letting it diffuse in. And then using it and letting the carbon dioxide diffuse out back into the bloodstream and carrying it back to the lungs and breathing out. That's a whole loop based on diffusion. But it's really just, just those, just the little ones that can get it in and out like that. Tomorrow, we'll start talking about what happens when molecules are stuck inside or outside the membrane. A couple things. It's a kind of a weird water effect that happens when they're stuck. And then after that, we'll talk about how you get things in and out on purpose that are too big. We've already mentioned one, the glucose channel. Channel proteins are one, but there's others. Great question? No. Okay. All right. That's probably good. Um, I'll kind of let you be here. You got something due tomorrow. You got something that was due today that I didn't take, so make sure that's done.